And welcome into Ultimate Soccer one more time. This time, it's an international game. It's Canada. You know we talk Canada. You know we talk Wrexham. Well, this time, it's Canada. And it's Canada taking on Panama. Canada 38th, Panama 37th. The Maple Leaf taking on Los Canoleros. Sounds good, doesn't it? Los Canoleros. Do you know what that means? Well, I'll tell you. It means simply the canal men. Because obviously the Panama Canal, Panama, the canal, Canaleros, it really makes sense, yes? So, bienvenidos, mi amigos, mi amigas. Welcome in, my friend. Welcome in, everybody worldwide. Hey, check out the menu before we go any further. That's where we're going. So, if you're here for the first time, join the family. Like and subscribe, or as we say, pay for your ticket now before we talk canada we're going to talk canadian premier league very briefly i went to a game yesterday like you know i do well now i'm going to show you the journey there a little inside the ground somewhat remember the water truck because there's a really funny comment coming you better have a sarcastic nature to you remember the water truck because someone in behind makes a funny ass comment and I didn't see it coming, but you'll get the reaction to that comment when it comes in. So check out that as well. But remember the water truck, other scenes inside of the ground, and other little things in and around the ground as we shut down the game and as we move out of the game. And then a little bit of highway driving as we go on from there. That explains it. But after that, we're going to the menu. Check it out. Be right back. Well, we're on our way to Cavalry FC, but I thought I'd share the view. Oh, by the way. That's what we're listening to right now. We're listening to the king. What a great view. I'm going to show you around. Beautiful, sunny, sunny day in early fall here in Alberta. All around, it's fall. This is Thanksgiving time of year, people, so we're on our way to the game. Soon we'll be there. Just thought I'd let you see that as we're traveling down the highway. There the scene's coming out. And in the corner where we're headed, foot soldiers have got the smoke already in gear. That's where we're headed. And this is how they water the park here at Atco Field. Check it out. Getting it watered ready for the second half. Let me wet, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> There's Stewie. Stewie's an OG here. Stewie, quick question. Canada plays on Tuesday. Do you think it's going to be a win or a draw? Yeah, I think it's going to be a win. It's Panama, Panama, isn't it? Yeah, Panama, yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be a win, yeah. What's the scoreline? I think it's 2-1. 2-1. Two, one. Two, one. Cheers, Stewie. Bill, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Canada's playing Panama. On Tuesday, yes. what's the score going to be, mate? I reckon it's going to be a 2-1 to Canada. 2-1 to Canada? I think if Davies is on the pitch, I reckon he'll make it the winning goal in the 91st minute. Brilliant. But you know, with these things, you know, you can't exactly be too sure to with Canada, but that's right. Awesome. Cheers, Bobby. Another Canadian. Canada plays on Tuesday. Yes. What do you think the score's going to be? Oh, I think one nothing. one nothing. Yes. Do you know what? Me and you are saying the same scoreline. Perfect. One nil for Canada. Thank Excellent. you, guys. Perfect. That's going on Ultimate Soccer. Oh yes! What a brilliant day! In he comes! In he comes! Yes! Great day! So now it empties out and that's what it looks like when the crowd goes home. So Cavalry win 2-1, it was a great game. Late goal, a lot of fun. And with every big match you go to see, when you leave the ground, there's a big line of traffic. So you get in behind before you get out of here, yeah? And something you never normally see. But there's the trailer that does all the TV work. Just thought you'd like to see that too. That's what every game needs. And waiting for the guys is their bus. And those are the changing rooms for the guys. So I hope nobody was offended there, but uh, 
get me wet daddy uh yeah that was kind of funny at the time i have to say people were pissing themselves laughing and i mean comedy's comedy right and that's what a football crowd brings you it brings you the characters i know because i'm one of them and you should be with me in the ground you'd be laughing your ass right off now before we go anywhere let's kick off with some history between canada and panama yes the last big big outing and do you remember the goal that alfonso scored if you've been here canadian fans i want to know if you remember this song when it happened no one else has sung it ever since i've done it but when alfonso when alfonso scores that goal against panama alfonso whoa, 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 alfonso whoa, 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 whoa. he keeps the ball in play destroys panama's day alfonso whoa, 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 whoa. Alfonso, woo, 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 woo. it keeps the ball in play, destroys Panama's Day, and that's what I sang two years ago. So there we go, two years. Moving on. Hey, I tell you what, I hope he gets another one. In check, damn highlights out. Enjoy. Yeah, please, guys, remember, join our club, become one of our new members, just like those guys right there. Let's take a look at the highlights. Gets underway very well. Murillo, four minutes in, one nil Panama. Will it happen this time? We gotcha. No, you don't. Blackburn own goal, one piece. After 27, Canada standing tall. No, no, but hey, who does not remember the goal that Alfonso scores? Oh yes, he zigs, he zags, it goes in the back of the net. Brilliant, 2-1, thank you, man. Oh yes. 3-1 over the top, Tejan does get the header on this one. Great finish. And finally, goes over to the back post. JD missed the security there. Bang in the back post. Did you remember that? Did you remember that? Yeah, great memories. Great memories. World Cup qualifying. It was an absolute blast. Yes, we came through the minnows qualifying into the top flight qualifying. The octagon. We got through. We made it happen and came out numero uno. Now, in this game, one of the guys I've got a lot of time for, a lot of respect for, and a guy that you probably do know a lot about as well. Yeah? Is Adalberto Carasquilla. Take a look at what happened when he took on the US. Not this one, but a couple of games back. Get under his skin and you get under Panama's skin because he's their, he's their primo player, yeah? He's their superstar, yeah? They've got other stars as well, but Carasquilla, he's the man. Get under his skin. This could happen. So Carasquilla... Really sized down Pulisic. Now, does Pulisic deserve a red card too? Isn't that also violent play? Karaskia on the ground. Behalter's going through the motions. He's he's thinking his piece. But Pulisic, after the motion. But here, bang. Yeah, it's bad. But did he deserve to get a red card too? Karaskia, get under his skin. So, yes, Adalberto, get under his skin. You never know what's going to happen. Now, moving along, this is for both sets of fans, yeah? Canaleros fans, Maple Leaf fans, this is for both sets of fans. You get a lot out of this, but Canadian fans, you're going to get the most out of it, obviously. We're going to take a look at some of the four-year team history. You want to stay with this because by the time you get through it, I'll have given you an insight as to where we are on the scoring prowess over the last four years, where we sit, where it's going, and a few other things too. We're going to show you the schedule as well. We're also going to show you some scoring notes on three players. You'll find that very interesting, and you'll take something away from that, and you'll find that my take is probably a little hard-hitting, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from, because I want the best for Canada, and I don't care who wears the shirt. If you're getting the job done, that's all I really care about. This time around on Ultimate Soccer, we're looking at Canada's national team. And we're going to start off with the last four years of form. Then we'll get into the schedule. Then we'll get into some scoring notes. I'm going to leave you with an impression there, Canada fans. I definitely will stick with that one. Then I'm going to give you the head-to-head -head like I do each week on Ultimate Soccer. And then we'll look at the Canadian squad. So moving forward, let's take a look at 2021. Now you start reading there. I'm not going to freeze frame it all the way through, but I will be moving along. You keep reading. What I'm looking at is upstairs, 19 games played, 13 wins. It was a record year. And those wins and losses, those are wins and losses that I'm highlighting. There may well have been other losses and wins along the way. That's the first season I want to show you there. That's John Herdman's work. And there's Alistair Johnson. Who doesn't love Ali? Now, 
2022, different story. 15 games, not 13 wins, 7 wins, and not 51 goals. No, not 51 goals, 23 goals. Big difference, yeah? And take a look at the the stats below, the wins, the losses, and what happens. And remember the World Cup? I do. Now, moving along, 2023. Hello, JD. 11 games, 5 wins, 3 draws, 3 losses, 21 goals, not 51. Now 21 and 17 against. It's getting closer, 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 yeah? And we've got John Herdman and Mauro Biello. Two games as coaching in that time as well. Some big wins, but there's also some big losses in there. Who does not remember that? Moving along, 2024. Hello, Kyle. Joint top scorer for Canada, obviously with JD, Jonathan David. Now look at again, 11 games, not five wins, but three wins, not three draws, but five draws and still three losses on the season. Eight goals. Remember three years ago, 51 goals. Now eight I tell you what, in a harsh term, the reason why those goals came so easy three years previous is because Canada was playing nobodies. There's the schedule as she is, Panama, and obviously November, we've got the quarterfinal games coming up as well. And don't forget, 2026, 608 days away, if you want to know, 608 days away, as I say. Yes, the World Cup. What a dream. And I remember working on the LOC, local organizing committee, for one of those World Cups here in Canada. It was absolute honor. It was an absolute honor. Now, your scoring notes. I'm a big fan of JD. Yeah, he started in 2018. So he's only been with the national team six years. But look at the numbers. Yeah, 56 games, matches, 29 goals. And he's a big game player. Look at the big games he's scored in. He's a big game player. JD, he will be our highest goal scorer moving forward for many, many years. May well be what you would say the Harry Kane of Canadian football as far as numbers goes moving into the future because he's still a young guy. Now his counterpart, Kyle Larin, joint Canadian top scorer, both on 29 goals. Look at the big games. Look at the big games. He's had a few big games, but not as big a game as JD. And his numbers are in the tank. If you're thinking of a striker, yeah? He's only given you those numbers in the last couple of years. It's not been the greatest, yeah? And remember, 2021, we were banging goals in against nobody countries. And I'm not being rude, but when you're talking quality football, that's exactly what we were not, we're not playing in 2021. Hence, that's why we went through qualifying so easy. And the stage of qualifying that Canada went through then, we should never have been at anyway. You know that. Let's put it to, you know, the, the punch right on the chin where it belongs. But that's... That's your man, Kyle Larin. He's been there 10 years. I want to switch angles and look at Jacob Shuffleberg. Check this out. Yes, Canada fans, you call him the Messi, the Canadian Messi. Absolutely, I do too. I think he's phenomenal. And if you look in only 17 games, yeah, and he's only been there four years, and he's already got two big winning game goals per se against the USA and one against Venezuela. Look at his numbers. This kid is on the rise. I love him. You love him. That's why I'm highlighting the man. Our Canadian Messi. Now, briefly, I do tease you each week the head-to-head. -head. What do you think the head-to-head -head is this week? One, two, three. Eins, zwei, drei, uno, dos, tres. There you go. Five, six, two. Canada is bossing it. Now, take a look at the games all time. That's what you got so far. Yes, very interesting. I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you. And it's going to be interesting to see which way this game goes and how your man... Jesse Marsh gets the squad together on what he does pick. And incidentally, yes, Canada are 38th in the world. And the average age of the squad, just so that you know, I can do some maths for you. Yes, I can. There you go. And what are these two guys going to figure out for 90 minutes plus? Hey, we'll have to find out at kickoff. Like and subscribe, guys. Join the family. Now, briefly on the game talk, I'm expecting to see a very, very tight game. Here's the prediction. I think Thomas Christensen and Jesse Marsh are going to line their teams up for a stalemate. I think this looks like a draw, but I'm going with the 1-0 home win based upon the fact that Canada's looking to prove something. And in the next 608 days, we are prepping for the World Cup as a host for three games. The first game kicks off June, June 12th. 
2026. But from now on in, Canada, we're prepping for the next World Cup. Remember, I've worked a local organization committee for a World Cup in Canada. I know how long that takes, but when you're talking about the team itself, every day matters, and every player that we can bring in and try out between now and the World Cup we got to look at. We've got to turn every rock upside down and find the star talent that we have never seen before. We've got a decent squad now. We've got a very decent squad, 38th in the world. But we've got to continually add to it. And the average age that you saw in the highlight reel, 23.84. That's a great age. 26 is the perfect age for the footballer. We're two years younger than that. If we can stay that age group, Right across the board, we'll have a fit, young, fast footballing team. That's what you need at a World Cup. And you need a full squad too. So like I say, every day moving forward is a day that we have to prep for the next World Cup. Canada coming into this, the last three games unbeaten. Some big teams in the past as well. You're talking Uruguay, you're talking the United States, you're talking Mexico unbeaten in all three of those games. Forget about the penalties. The matter is in 90 minutes plus, we equaled or were as good as or better as the three teams I just mentioned. If you look at Panama coming in, 37th in the world, just losing 2-0 to the US, played a tight game. And frankly, Panama should have got something out of that game. You Panama fans, Canaleros fans, you know for sure, the first half, you should have got something in there. There were at least three chances Panama to score, and you didn't. You've got to take the chances. And the US came got the first goal, got the second goal, done and dusted. And Pochettino, he looks like a superstar on game one with the US. But I'm saying this much, looking at Panama now, looking at Panama, totally different season. Totally different season. Christian soon has got this team going around. Looking at the squad form, team form, it's a yo-yo. 2024 is a very strange year for Panama. Two wins, two losses, two wins, two losses, two losses. Okay, so here we go. Two losses to start the year, then two wins. Two losses, then two wins. The last two games, two losses. Theoretically, you're going to form. You'd be saying, well, they've had two losses and they're yo-yoing losses to wins, losses to wins. They're possibly on for a win. You could see that happening. You really could. It's been that kind of year. And the losses, the losses have come to decent teams. Yeah, Paraguay, Uruguay, you also say Colombia. United States, Mexico, and Jamaica. So they've lost to decent teams, and they've won against Minnow teams, Montserrat, amongst the few. But again, it's been a yo-yo year. Will they now turn the loss in America to a win in Toronto? Something tells me maybe not, but you've got to say, towards form, that's what you're looking at. At the end of the day, who wants it most gets it most. A couple of talking points. What kind of games do you think we're going to get? Jesse Marsh. Definitely got some young talent. When you looked at the squad, and go back and look at the squad, you look at the squad, there's some young talent that needs to be tested. I'd love, love to see Theo Bear get at least 75 minutes. We know what Kyle Lurin can do. We know what Jonathan David can do. I'd start Jonathan David, sit Kyle Lurin, bring in Theo Bear, and try out some of the young kids moving through the first to the second half, bring Kyle Lurin in towards the end. My favourite all-time is JD, Jonathan David. I think we now need to find him another partner for the World Cup. There's no point relying on Kyle Lowry. He don't get it done all the time. You've seen his numbers. JD's numbers are much better. Theo Bear, let him have a chance, yeah? Schaffelberg, you've seen him as well. I could go on and on and on about other players. But give some of the other guys a chance. It's not a problem to lose this game if you're trying out guys and you play like a team and you get the ball into the zones where you need it to be. If you don't score on the day, fine, I get it. But at least try these guys out. I think that's what Jesse's got to do. On the day, a couple of other talking points for you. Your personal striker. I just mentioned it there, but who's your personal striker moving forward to partner JD? Or if you don't want to partner JD, which I think would be crazy, but everybody's got their own mind on what should be up front, who would be your dream partnership up front? Two players. Who starts for Canada? Who's going to the World Cup for Canada? Who's your top two strikers? I'd like to see something else other than JD and Kyle Lowry. I'd like to see your partner someone with JD, Jonathan David. One of the other things is that a 48-team World Cup, this is like shooting to the future, but a 48-team World Cup, is that diluting the product? 
I'll say one thing. It almost but surely guarantees Canada get out of the first phase, group phase, into the next phase. That's one thing it possibly does do. Gives Canada more games. But is a 48 World Cup, a 48 team World Cup, not as good as a 32 team World Cup? That's what I'm asking. I think sometimes FIFA changes things, and I think sometimes you can keep some things as are. Because to me, that's just looking like it's the commercial end of the game to make more money, to get more games, TVs going further. I don't necessarily think that that brings a top, top competition. Anyway, that's what we've got for you on this one. i got to say, get ready for some Canada drama because in CONCACAF, there's always drama, whether it's the teams or whether it's the referee. Hey, We always get drama in CONCACAF. And I'll tell you what, I wouldn't really have it any other way. I like it the way it is. I really do. So you got to say, hombre del partido. Who will be the hombre del partido? Who's going to be your man of the match? Think about that one when the game's over. Who's possibly your man of the match? Hombre del partido. And the little sons, let me know what you're thinking. And will JD strike? Or will it be Jacob? Will it be Kyle? Hey, is Karaskia going to see red? Or is he going to make this game turn on its head? And put Panama in the driving seat for another big victory. It's quite simple. It's Canada. It's Panama. It's BMO Field Toronto. Let's have it. Cheers.